So we hear about this every single day. We need to reduce the carbon dioxide emission. But what is carbon dioxide anyway, and what can I do about it? This presentation is going to cover how much volume one ton of carbon dioxide is, a little bit of history, where it comes from, why it's increasing on our planet, what it does to our world, and the future. Now, to look at how much volume one ton of carbon dioxide is, it's equivalent of 1.1 million pints. So if you imagine this pint has got pure carbon dioxide in it, that would be the equivalent of 1.1 million of these ones next to each other. Cheers. It is also the equivalent of 550 cubic meters, 20,000 cubic feet, or eight large shipping containers. So if I was to stack these shipping containers next to each other, you can see that's quite a lot of carbon dioxide. And if you take into consideration that every single one of us emits about 10 tons of carbon dioxide every single year, that's the equivalent of 80 of these shipping containers. Now carbon dioxide levels are 27 time percent higher right now than they've been for the last 650,000 years. And the qu question really is, how did we get there? You see, the carbon dioxide emissions began after the Industrial Revolution uh, in 1850, and they've steadily been rising. And the first global warming theory was actually coined even back in 1896 by Svante Arrhenius, who's a Swedish scientist, and it was pretty accurate. In 1930, it was confirmed that carbon dioxide concentration was rising. And by the 1990s, we pretty much knew and understood that this was the way the atmosphere was going. It was part of a lot of the textbooks that were available back then. I certainly remember reading a lot of it. But unfortunately, what happened was the political and capital capitalistic movement, they started ignoring the true dangers of uh, carbon dioxide because they wanted short-term gains. They wanted to maintain the momentum of the economy. But lately, we like to think that public choice and resolve is driving a real change in the reduction of carbon dioxide. But where does all this carbon dioxide come from anyway? Well, during the creation of the Earth, carbon dioxide was released from the rocks into the atmosphere. And about 2 billion years ago, the atmosphere had over 200 times more carbon dioxide than there is today. Then the oxygen producing life forms evolved and oxygen began to saturate the earth and it actually resulted in a mass extinction of some of the oxygen allergic organisms and changed the whole ecosystem around. We then had an introduction of the carbon cycle which probably a lot of us would have learned about in school I didn't fully understand it but anyway, we now have natural sources such as volcanoes and forest fires, which emit uh, carbon dioxide. We have, of course, living organisms, and we have fossil fuel combustion, which is what the majority of the problem is nowadays, because this combustion of fossil fuel, this fuel which was locked away deep down into the ground, is now being reintroduced into the carbon cycle, and this is what's really creating the problem. So carbon dioxide is increasing on our planet, and this is a very well-established science. We have been taking measurements every single year for the last 100 years, and we can see since 1960 up until projected 2010, the carbon dioxide levels are going to have risen from 310 to 390 uh, part per million. The temperature is also quite closely correlated to the increase of the carbon dioxide. As you can see here from 1960 going forward to 2010, you can see here the temperature is a blue line and the yellow line is the carbon dioxide. And there's quite a clear correlation between the temperature and the carbon dioxide increase. And these, these facts are widely acknowledged and verified by the World Health Organization, United Nations, European Union, just to mention a few organizations. But what does all this carbon dioxide do to the world? One of the things which is not really very widely acknowledged is that it's absorbed into huge quantities into the ocean, which will make the ocean more acidic. Now, a more acidic ocean means that a lot of organisms, such as coral reefs, will die because they don't anymore have the environment they used to be yet used to so they're very sensitive to changes in the pH value around them and when that changes and gets lower then unfortunately they die of course we know about the problems of the changing weather patterns more more heat means more storms and less predictable weather 
More heat is of course trapped on the planet, which is global warming, and what will happen then is when we have more heat trapped, it means that the sea levels are going to rise because the ocean is going to expand and the ice is going to melt and run into the ocean, which is going to cause it to rise. And that's of course a problem because a lot of us live in low coastal areas and millions and millions of people will be displaced and, and, and it's almost impossible already to stop this process from happening but what we can do is prevent it from getting worse. Another very unfortunate consequence is that animals are going to lose their, ha po uh, their natural habitat and quite possibly go extinct. For example you can imagine a polar bear being quite dependent on having its ice to live from. That is definitely a big problem. Now these changing weather patterns will lead to agricultural failure uh, there will definitely be famine and there will possibly also be war because there will be of course a fight for the resources which are available. So we are uh, we're heading into uncharted territory here. We we can't reverse the global warming problem right now, but we probably can we can definitely try and prevent further damage. So as we all know and as we're being preached in by left, right and centre, the CO two emissions must be curbed to avoid the serious and irreversible damage to our planet. We all need to take responsibility for this. We need to think about our children, we need to think about their children. Would we like to leave them a working planet? Would we like to have that they look at, on, at us and think, oh God, you know, they, they, could have, they could have made a change, they could have done something different, but they didn't. Now, these environmental friendly technologies which uh, there's a lot of media about right now are becoming more popular and useful every single year. There is more focus on renewable energy so sources, there's more focus on energy efficiency and a lot of innovative solutions being co considered and developed and implemented across the world like for example carbon capture storage technology and way out into the future hopefully we'll also have better ways of making energy like for example fusion energy but that's still quite far into the future but for now I'd like us all to remember that if we can make something as amazing as, as this space station and when I look at this picture and I really do think this is quite incredible that we have been able to place this object in free fall around the earth traveling at 7, 27,000 kilometers per hour well then I definitely think we should be able to reduce our carbon dioxide output. Now I'd like to thank you of course for viewing this video and if you'd like any further information then please do contact us via email or via phone or check out the website and I hope you have a great day. Thanks.